Hey guys, it's Jeff off the gridiron. Well, I'm in my shop today and uh, looking for some inspiration. And like most of you, most of us on uh, on YouTube, you only have to watch a couple of videos and Google it and uh, find some easy inspiration to uh, get a project kickstarted. Uh, today, I've got a uh, an old axe. Uh, actually, it's a hatchet, it's about a 16 inch hatchet. Bit of a no name on this one. And uh, this is an old build where I cut away. Um, the kind of lower lower portion to really give it that profile and uh, watching a fellow bushcrafter online this guy is crafty by nature and uh, <clears throat> he's got about twice as many subs as I do but uh, man he just his attention to detail his humble nature and it's really just a uh, fellow Canadian and I just love his uh, his products so again it's uh, early morning and uh, look for inspiration his video came up and uh, I really love this mask that he generated out of uh, leather and just uh, I, I can tell he takes his time and he's just a fine craftsman and uh, attention to detail and I like what he does so uh, that's the inspiration for today's build I'm gonna build an axe mask stick around hi guys welcome back Jeff Allen off the green iron Grab some pieces of uh, heavy gauge tooling leather and suitable for the job. I think uh, we're going to draw a pattern. Um, but just before I did, I came across this. This is an old piece of leather that my boys would uh, uh, bang away on. I'd set them up with some uh, some uh, punches and the, the mallet and teach them how to soak the leather and make it suitable for, uh, for uh, kind of taking those uh, punch marks. But uh, if I use this piece of leather, uh, that's a perfect opportunity to take that kind of like that fridge picture you would have uh, that they, they did. This would be on my mask for the life of the hatchet. And what a cool little reminder of uh, little ones at home and having that right on the mask on the axe or hatchet that you uh, happen to take away from home uh, and on an adventure. So we're going to try to use this and make our own hatchet mask for a hatchet. So one of the things I like to use instead of paper is some heavier cardboard. That just recreates the folds a little, a little easier. So we're going to use a piece of cardboard. This happens to be a kind of a cracker box and that will help trace and, and uh, create our mask uh, a little easier as a template and we'll fit that around the, uh, the uh, hatchet head. Okay, you can see how this mask is one piece with the fold over the top. So when we create our pattern, we have to have a mirror image in line with the uh, kind of the, the top or the, the spine of the axe head. Okay, with our piece of cardboard template ready, um, the, uh, the video showed the, uh, the mask fitting over top of the the head so we're going to use a template like this and then flip it over to the other side so we're going to start by tracing the okay and then we're going to flip it up and we can retrace that pattern and fill it Right down on the other side. There we go. Okay. 
Okay, something like this. Something like this, and then a nice cutaway down to here. We have to account for the stitching all the way around. He didn't come in quite as far as something like this. snaps will be able to match what would be the other side. So we have a pattern that should follow like so and again we'll, we'll make sure this is a mirror image of either side so it flips over and we have to account for this this gap across the top that fold and also account for where you're going to have your stitching and if you need a welt uh, on either side back in here. The big idea is the distance between your stitching here and the top fold. That distance has to be the, uh, the same width as your bit in order for it to fit in the sheath. Now I'm going to try to cut it out. I like this side a little better. This side kind of ran off the cardboard a little bit. I'm going to cut out a pattern. And we're only going to do half because we're going to try to fold it along the, the mid, mid line of our picture here. Okay, so now with our one inch on one side, we can fold it over and we can create a matching template on the other side despite our initial cardboard markings. Clean up both sides to match. Cardboard is a little harder to work with than paper, but it does stand up to all the, the flexing and bending fairly well. There we go. Now, if you mash, give the top a little bit of flexion, and then we can take. and see how, how it fits. And those, those little snap spots drop down equally on both sides. And if I pinch the, uh, pinch the cardboard here on the, the underside, there's lots of room lots of room inside for um, the welt and again across the inside we've got lots of lots of thickness and depth there to provide room for our stitching. I always like to do a pinch test and make sure the hatchet is able to come in in and out because that's the that's the big main height difference right there because you wanted it to be able to fit inside the mask. So the distance from this point to the top has to account for this mask to be able to fit in and that's a, that's a measurement you want to be taking and familiar with as we, uh, as we work with the leather. Let's get it transferred on the leather. So luckily our uh our template fits on our uh, leather scrap, so we're going to just manipulate it around to find the best best fit onto our leather leather piece.
And once your piece is cut out, you want to dry fit it to the axe. There we go. Something like that. Now we can take our edge, our beveling tool, and clean up the edges. Okay, now with the general pattern cut out, I'm going to take my kind of scoring tool and mark a groove for the stitch lines. Okay, with stitch lines marked, and we'll replicate it on the back side. Now we can take our stitching wheel and mark the stitches. To prevent the uh, sheath from moving around and the holes becoming out of alignment, sometimes I apply some contact cement and can put the sheath together and almost do a dry fit uh, before stitching. And this would uh, just verify that everything fits properly and also if it does fit properly, the holes are all in alignment. ready to be stitched, drilled and stitched. So I'll just apply some of this contact. This is um, contact cement and I'll allow that to dry. This is a, a non-toxic water-based contact cement that I'm using. And with contact cement you put it on both surfaces, let it dry so it's almost tacky. Once those two surfaces are touched together they are uh, they're bonded, so we'll just let that dry up. Okay, once the uh, glue feels almost tacky, uh, doesn't come off, you're going to push and fold these two sides together. And once they're in alignment, and you pinch those, those bonds, they are there. So you can see already. There you go. And if left dry, that's probably sufficient. But I always like to throw some uh, some uh, stitching in there to keep it nice and secure. You can see some of these patterns coming through now. So we'll get uh, we'll get it all stitched up, and then we'll uh, smooth the edges so they're all nice and nice and square. Okay, now I'm going to start sewing all the way across, but to uh, protect the uh, the finished mask from the neural marks on the jaws, I'm just going to sandwich it between another piece of scrap leather, and that'll give me hands-free opportunity to stitch it across without uh, without marking the mask. This is called a saddle stitch, I believe. That's what I call it, anyways.
find anytime I'm sewing this heavy leather, even though I've pre pre drilled the hole, sometimes when I start the needle, I'll give it a few kind of big rotations. And on the back side of the needle, I've just tied a quick overhand knot, and that really keeps the uh, the thread from coming out of the uh, the eye of the needle. And pull it tight, put it in. Just a quick stretch of the hole. And that makes it easier coming back through because there's going to be the thickness of a thread in that hole already. And a couple more. Sometimes it's really, really stiff. I'll just grab a pair of pliers and just give it a kind of pull. And we have all the same tension all the way along our seams here. So So once we've made it to the end, we're going to, I think, do we have one more hole? Have one more hole. No, that's it. Once we've made it to the end, to anchor off, we're going to backtrack a few stitches. So we'll just start running it backwards now. These holes are quite... Okay, now that we've come back a few stitches, we're going to snip off about a quarter inch left on either side. Get our lighter. And that'll melt the kind of synthetic thread down. And if you put it out just before it gets to the previous stitch, it'll melt and bond to that other, other stitch. Just like that. And it's locked in there. Okay, with our axe mask now all laced up, um, I haven't again decided if I'm, what finish I'm going to put on it, and obviously I didn't dye it, but uh, we might go natural natural tan and the moment of truth we can take our axe and see how that fits in there and just like that almost don't need a strap but uh, I found some other strap material of a little different color so we're going to rivet that on there like so on one side and attach a, uh, a dome on the back side I like that There's the good old happy face. Maybe that's supposed to be me and my spiky hair. So for me, deciding on what what side to put the snap on, it would make sense to me to have it permanently fastened on the back side. And then when you're taking your axe out, undo the snap from this side and take it out that way. So I think we're going to have the snap here, and we'll put the uh, the swivel side on this side. For the swivel, I have uh, found an, kind of uh, an old silver Chicago screw, and we'll put that in with a little drop of Loctite. And on the front side, we're just going to find a, a, a dome snap, and uh, that'll be what we use for that.
Okay, with one snap on this side, you flip it over, pull everything nice and snug, and then we can mark mark for our eyelet on this side using any kind of marking tool. There we go. That's where the hole will have to be. Okay, ready to uh, stain the axe. Some people do it early in the process. I always wait to the finished product, and then I uh, can get get at all the uh, areas that are exposed. And uh, I'm all out of my natural leather stains, so uh, what I'm going to do instead, uh, I'm going to experiment with some uh, old Minwax red mahogany, and this is a uh, sealer oil, and uh, I mean that would uh, definitely penetrate and seal it in. And linseed oil because I want to redo uh, redo the handle anyways. So a combination of these products, and we'll see what we end up with. I'm just going to use a. Uh, I've got it all mixed up there. Quite watery. I'm just going to use a shop towel. And I don't worry too much about the gloves because uh, I always like working with my hands anyways. The only thing about a shop towel is it does soak it up almost as much as the leather. Make sure you get down on all the stitching. It's a little tricky around here. This is why you usually dye it before you put all your snaps and straps on because you can get in, get all underneath there. And And I'll rub up inside just as far as up as I can reach. Okay, I don't need any more. I'll put the lid back on the jar. And just kind of keep massaging it, keep working it until you have a real uniform color. Really trying to blend in some of the, get it all into all the different green. We can go back later and, uh, there we go. Really like all the character that's taken on. Not too much, just a little bit on the rag. Okay, after a couple hours of work, here it is, the uh, hatchet mask, inspired by Crafty by Nature, but I know there's a lot of them 
a lot of them out there and uh, what I really enjoyed about this build was the utilizing of uh, a piece of leather that I had given the boys and they were just exploring and experimenting with the, uh, the different punch tools and, but certainly the uh, the character I mean I didn't have any proper stain um, I think I used uh, linseed oil and hardwood oil and uh, a can of minwax and uh, red mahogany and just kind of rubbed it in with a cloth but uh, <laughs> it does give it some character some aged look the uh, Chicago screw is a bit of an eyesore but a uh, little, little snap and uh, it comes out uh, Rocks out of there fairly easily and uh, back in again but uh, you can see some of the some of the detail okay and now to add the final touch uh, my logo let's just start up the machine and Brand my logo on there. Clean it up a bit. Get some of that oils back on there that were lasered off. Off the gridiron, branded. Well guys, thanks for watching. Obviously inspiration comes from just about anywhere and uh, if you're anything like me, watching YouTube, in this case Crafty by Nature, really inspired me to get in the shop and make this little hatchet mask today. Um, and uh, what I really like about it is that it was uh, a recycled piece of leather that my boys had explored some of the, uh, the fun leather punches and, and uh, so on and uh, really kind of <laughs> beat up that scrap of leather, but I thought I'd recycle it back into uh, this great uh, axe mask that I'll, uh, I'll always cherish and, and have with me uh, in the woods if they're not with me. I'll always be thinking of them. So, uh, we can see a little branding there of my uh, Jeff Allen Off the Gridiron logo. That logo came about as a design with uh, antler, feathers or a wing, and a fish hook, and those represent hunting and fishing. Uh, obviously big passions of mine um, when I'm not uh, not working so until next time hopefully you find some inspiration and, and get in your shop and uh, be creative in your own right don't forget to click like subscribe and share thanks for watching enjoy your outdoors we'll see you next time for another DIY bushcraft build likely let's get back to YouTube